We're broadcasting from the 18th U.N. Climate Change Summit. I'm Amy Goodman. The billionaire brothers Charles and David Koch are known for funneling vast donations into Republican campaigns in the United States. But what impact are the Koch brothers having on global warming? As the U.S. is accused of blocking progress here at COP18 talks in Doha, a new report says the Koch brothers may be the biggest force behind the climate stalemate. The Koch brothers run oil refineries and control thousands of miles of pipeline, giving them a massive personal stake in the fossil fuel industry. But researchers say they've also funneled tens of millions of dollars into climate denial science, lobbying, and other efforts to derail policy that could lessen the impact of global warming. The report is called Faces Behind a Global Crisis, U.S. Carbon Billionaires and the U.N. Climate Deadlock. To talk more about this, we're joined by one of its authors, Victor Minotti, Executive Director of the International Forum on Globalization. Victor, we welcome you to Democracy Now! And I just want to point out, for people who are watching on television, you might have noticed a spider over my left shoulder. Um, and that is... Uh, a piece of art here at the convention center. It's a massive nine meter high sculpture by the um, sculptor Louise Bourgeois. It's called Maman, and it's got a marble eggs uh, inside the spider's sack. Um, and it was, uh, she thought of it fondly, actually, for her mother, who was a weaver in France. Um, you have an image of the, what you call the coctopus, uh, Victor Minotti. Uh, not exactly what you consider a positive image but not looking so different for what, with this work of public art behind us. It is it's the perfect backdrop to explain what's going on here in Doha. It's, it's a, it's a follow-the-money story, and it goes from Doha to Washington to Wichita, which is where the Cokes are based. A lot of people may think this sounds like a conspiracy theory, but you look very soberly at what the, who's moving the money and where it's coming from. These two brothers, Charles and David, are now the world's wealthiest individuals. Their, their combined net worth now exceeds that of the world's wealthiest man, Carlos Slim. And they have spent more than anybody, more than any gas and oil company, more than even Exxon, in campaign contributions. The richest men are, number one? Uh, Carlos Slim. Number two? Um, uh, it's Bill Gates. Number three is Warren uh, Amanasio Ortega from Spain, the Zara, the clothing company, um, then Warren Buffett. But if you took the, the Koch brothers together and combine them, we consider them a single financial political entity, so the way they operate. They, they're at $80.2 billion and Carlos Slim at $71.8 billion. So they wield their wealth to really stop the process in the U.S. for phasing out fossil fuels. They've spent more than anybody on uh, campaign contributions, lobbying expenditures, cam uh, climate denial science. And they're we're not saying they are the only force. They are part of the fossil fuels complex. But they are the financial force and the ideological leaders of the counter movement. I wanted to ask you um, about uh, an action that took place this week. Um, the, I wanted to play um, a comment of uh, one of the people who were arrested this week protesting um, in, um, uh, in Texas. Uh, as delegates and activists gather here in Doha at the UN Climate Conference. On Monday, two activists in Texas locked themselves inside a section of pipe that's part of the Keystone XL pipeline that's now under construction by the company TransCanada. The pipeline would carry crude oil from Canada's tar sands to the U.S. Gulf Coast, a project opponents say would produce lethal levels of carbon emissions while endangering communities along its path. President Obama now faces a decision about the pipeline's approval after laying it until after the 2012 election. The section of the pipeline where activists lock themselves would run less than 100 feet from homes near Winona, Texas. This is Matt Almont speaking in the dark from 25 feet inside the section of pipe after he locked himself between two barrels of concrete weighing over 600 pounds each. So, it's the first night being here in this pipe. And, and uh, basically, we've set up shop here. Um, I feel it's very important for people to feel empowered to take action against resource extraction. Uh, the Keystone XL pipeline is, uh, it doesn't really serve to benefit anybody but the corporations who will reap all the profit at the expense of the communities that will be poisoned through their water, through their air, um, and it's just not right. And I wanted to plant myself in the middle of that fight. 
That was activist Matt Almont speaking 25 feet inside a section of the Keystone XL pipeline. He and two others were later removed from the pipe by police and charged with resisting arrest, criminal trespassing, and illegal dumping. Uh, Victor Minotti, what is the Keystone XL pipeline, which thousands have protested and many have been arrested for in front of the White House in the last year? What does it have to do with the Koch brothers? The 25% uh, of the current tar sands imports they process already. The Cokes uh, have vast holdings in Canada and tar sands territory. They, they already have uh, some of the networks of the pipelines, the refineries existing in, in Corpus Christi. We call it the Coke Keystone Pipeline. Your final conclusions as you finish this U.S. carbon billionaires and the U.N. climate deadlock. Um, that the world needs the United States to mobilize around uh, the force of these Koch brothers um, to get private money out of politics and to isolate their extreme elements in the Republican Party. It's, these aren't all conservatives thinking this way. These are extremists and they need to be isolated. Victor Minotti uh, with the International Forum on Globalization, faces behind a global crisis, U.S. carbon billionaires and the U.N. climate deadlock is his uh, report. And we'll link to it at Democracy Now! Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.